your password will be very strong. This can generate passwords for you. Never going to get this word because this is not access in English. Shh. This is not a tech video. <laughs> Did you see my ugly face as a close up? Anyway, I don't think camera could focus that. If you ever happen to use a password in your life, this video is for you. You don't have to be even someone close to tech industry. You may be accountant, you may be artist. If you have a password, if you happen to use a password, this video is for you. So in your life, you may get a chance to use a password, probably to your email address, to be a Facebook account, even to some Excel sheet or something. But did you ever thought is this password is secure enough and if you, you, I mean, if we, what you do is you just use a password and you made your mind, okay, my thing is secure. In this video, I'm going to talk about and I'm going to teach you how you can make a secure password to uh, secure your stuff. Okay. In other hand, if you're a software engineer or if you're an architect or someone, you may got a chance and obviously you will be get a chance to design a password to secure something which is not belongs to you probably to servers, to databases, to the firewalls, to the many things, right? So you will going to do that same thing in at least one time in your life. So you must learn how to design a secure password. Anyway, if your password is less than uh, probably six or eight characters, if your password is a plain text, if your password is just a password that one, two, three, four, then obviously you need to change password immediately after this video, okay? So do you know the most common password in the world? Probably is a password that one, two, three. Because we just sometimes decide a password, something because asking a password. Here's a few problems with the password. Number one, today there are multiple systems asking a password from us, right? So your email, your Facebook, your bank account, your this and that and everything asking a password. So we don't capable to remember this much of password. So what we usually do is we select one password. We use this password in every account we use. Sometimes people use same password by adding a prefix or suffix to the same password to different account. But here's the problem. Password does not get leaked just because of your fault. Password get leaked because of many reasons. For example, take this. So here you, okay. Here you have a multiple system dealing with, right? So now you use the same password to all those systems, right? So you don't know who the system designed. You don't know their capacity or qualification to design such system, right? They just design a system that is deployed to so you give your password. So now you gave the same password for all of these systems, right? So now what happens is, Let's assume this system is vulnerable. This system is designed someone who don't have a much experience or qualification. So therefore, they didn't put proper security measurement to this database or their system. So, so now third party person get access to this system, right, data. So they get your password. So now what, once they get password, your all systems are vulnerable, right? Why? Because you use the same password for all those systems. So, if your password get leaked out, that is not your fault, right? I mean, that can be your fault, but you are not the only reason to get your password leaked. Your password can get into someone's hand just because of some other people's weakness as well. So do not use same password for all those systems. Here's the one possible thing you can do. So don't keep common password. There are systems, most of systems, we just happen to use like once in a year or something. Maybe probably we never go there back. Right. So if such system asking a password, just generate some uh, random text and just type it over there. Right. It doesn't matter whether you remember it or not because you're not going to access it. Let's say for some reason you happen to access this like in a two years later, just probably they have a forgot password link. Then just use that and reset your password and get into that back. Right. So in that way, you can eliminate few other system where you need a unique password. Now, next thing is how a password become a good password. For example, let's say you have a password with the three, let three uh, words, right? So here's the word one, here's the word two, and here's the word three, right? So if you happen to decide this password with this, some random text, right? 
So then the problem is someone can brute force this password. Brute force is some kind of a task, right? Like you tried everything. For example, if your password is a two digits, right? So let's say your password is a two digits. So brute force is nothing but you just try from zero and to all the way to 99, at least one password, one number is your password, right? So that's a brute force. So now you understand, as long as you have more characters in your password, then it's hard to brute force, right? So that's why we usually say, use nine or more characters in your password. If your password is, let's say, less than six or seven characters, then probably some password cracking tools may need less than one day to uh, break your password, okay? So change it now. So nine, if you have a nine plus, plus characters, then you're good and you can add some numbers, right? So then it become more complicated, your password. Then you can add some special characters, right? Probably add sign, probably uh, hash mark, something like that. This is good to uh, protect your usual data, like your Wi-Fi, uh, like say your some like day-to-day uh, -day usual website, news website, and so on. Okay, this is this is a good password. It's hard to break. It's hard to regenerate, and it's hard to brute force. All right, but is this good enough to protect your more sensitive data? No, it is not. There's a one trick most of people use, they substitute letters. For example, people substitute A with the at, right? So if you say banana, people used to say B at N at N at, right? So they replace, so people replace E with letter three. That's also a bad idea. People replace file with dollar sign. This is a bad idea. Why this is bad idea? Because you are not the only one who think in the same way, right? Person who want to put eye on you is can try the same thing, right? There is something with hackers called dictionaries, right? So those password dictionaries are made up with the words like this, right? So because as a human, we all think one way or the other in the same way. I'll tell one other trick. Let's say I ask you to uh, come up with the four words, right? So probably you just look around and try to figure out four words, right? For example, if you look from here, right? Because those are the words you can find around, right? So you, when you look around, you can find those words. And more or less, it's sometimes it's emotionally connected to your character. Probably you're going to use your girlfriend's name or boyfriend's name or fiance or your father, mother, you're going to find a word which is close to you. Why? Your brain tells you if you use these words, it's very easy to remember, right? So therefore, usually probably people start to think a word something closer to your life, right? So that also make you become vulnerable. Why? Because if someone is getting to your life, if someone is getting to know about your life, it's very easy them to figure out what are the possible words you may use as a password. Right? That's one other important thing. In case when you ask for a forget password, if any website send you your password back to you, then that's a very, very dangerous. That is a good sign. You must change that password wherever you use any other places. Why? Because the system using your password as a plain text. Right? That's why a Facebook or Google or Twitter or any of other uh, reputed application, they don't know your password. So they use something called hashing to store the password and verify the password. Both, right? They don't know your password, they just can't reset your password. So that's good. With all these problems and all those concerns, how we can come up with a good password, right? So this is very important. Number one, if you're deciding a password for someone else's data because, the, because you are responsible for that password. And second, if your data is, has more value, probably your bank account, probably your uh, email, probably your file server, name anything, if it is sensitive to you, you must use a strong password. Okay, how you can come up with a good password? I'll tell you two techniques. Okay, here's the one basic rule. So if your password is a too short, and if your password is too long, right? If your password is too short, it's easy to break, right? If your password is too long, it's easy to forget, right? It's easy to forget. 
So one good solution is, one good alternative is you can use something called password managers, right? So there are enough password managers, I'm not going to name it here, there are free password managers as well. What they do is they, uh, they store your password and they use a very strong encryption, right? So you can read their reviews in the, uh, in the internet and then you can figure out what to use, depend on your budget or if, if you're looking for a free solution, right? So then you can get a master password. What does master password mean? You need that master password to get into your password manager. So password manager is the place uh, they stored all your passwords, but you need your password to access the password manager. The, the way they designed this, even the server cannot access your password without your master password, right? So as long as you keep your master password safe, then no one get into your other passwords, right? So then how you can decide your master password? And this is very important, not only for password managers, master password. If you're deciding pa password for a database, for a financial system, for someone else's data or file servers or anything, you need to follow these rules. Okay. Your password has to have a multiple words, right? So these words should not have something meaning to you, right? That's idea. How many words? At least five words, right? At least five words. And probably 9 to 10 words depends on how security you want, right? So as long as your password is lengthy, it's really hard to break it. Okay, so now you need to figure out five different words, right? So let's say, for now I have five words, right? So now, are we need to put a space? I would say yes. Why? Otherwise, if you, uh, if you don't put any space, probably you may, these two words may join together and perform a new word which has a real good meaning, right? So if you say this password, horse flower is upread, right? Doesn't make any sense by reading that. And I mean, don't need to try, I don't use this password anywhere. So don't, you don't have to try it. And when I say you don't have to try, probably I can use this password. So because you don't get try. So now, if you get this password, this is good password, but you can make this is more good. How you can do that? You can add a, some special character in between one of these words, right? Which doesn't make sense to this word. For example, you can write this flower hash w e r, right? So now this doesn't make any sense, right? This is not a flower, right? Or you can say what you for P, right? And this makes sense. So now you have a same word, but don't ever replace O with the zero, right? Uh, e with the three, right? I with the one, don't do that, right? Just add some, it's not a replace, you just add some number or a special character in between that, right? So now here we got a good password. I would say use one word, probably that doesn't exist, right? Probably you made up that word, right? Instead of using this, you can say something, horse, gather is up red, so, right? So if you're not from Sri Lanka, you will confuse with what this one. So this is a singular word and it's a singlish, singular word for the house, right? So now it says gather. So if anyone from not in Sri Lanka, you're not, never going to get this word because this is not access in English, right? So this is just something, the word I made up. So you can made up, and if you're not a native English speaker, you can uh, made up your word, make it to type in English and get a good word. So now my password is more secure, right? And same time, I can add the same principle. I can replace, I can add hash or something here, right? Or you can misspell a word, right? For example, right, I want to use a scorpion instead of a horse, right? I would say scorpion. I just, I just made up that, right? It doesn't write spelling and so and so, right? So all this way, and now you know the pattern, right? You know what you can do. With this way, your password will be very strong. This password will be really hard to guess. Your password will be really hard to brute force. So now if you see this, by the way, you each and these are words are commonly used words, right? It's really hard human brain to come up with the words which is really less used, 
right? So if you go to internet, you can find the most uh, used 500 words, most used 1000 words in something like that. But if you think these words are one of those words, right? So then number two, how we can come up with a strong password even without that vulnerability? Alternative solution is this. This is nothing but it's a dice, right? And this can generate passwords for you. How that is possible? Here's how you do it, right? So there is something called Diceware. So Diceware is a technique. Diceware is a, I don't know if it's a company or something. What they have done is they have long list of words, long list of possible words we can use as a password, right? So this pass, these these uh, words doesn't have any meaning, but it has long words, right? So it's, it's a, if you print that, it's something like this. I just printed one page, but this has, I think, 30 or 40 pages, right? So how that works is, if you see this, it has some number against the word, right? So you can see it's a five-digit number. Okay, how we can use this, right? So what you just, just need a dice and access to this dice where password list, right? And uh, you can, uh, I'll give the link in the description below. You can uh, go and find this word list, right? So what you need to do is, let's say you need to come up with the five words which don't have the weakness what we discussed, right? So you just need to do is, you just need to roll this dice and get the number, right? So this number is a five, okay? So you roll again, it's a one, right? You roll again, it's two. You roll again, it's two. You roll again, three, right? So now you've got a number which has a five digits, right, from the dice. It's a five, one, two, two, three. So now you need to go through your uh, dice uh, word list and find what is the word against the five, one, two, two, three, right? So let's say I do this again. Okay. So likewise, I can come up with the numbers, five different numbers, right, from this dice. Those are completely random and there is no meaning with each this word and it doesn't have any meaning to my life right so likewise you can generate five different numbers like this altogether 25 times you need to roll this dice and you need to find these words from um, this uh, dice your password word list and then come up with your password and again you can do the all the things what we discussed like adding a special character adding a number right uh, in between one of these words and um, come up with the uh, strong password right so I'll I mean uh, you don't have to wait I'm uh, rolling this dice 25 times right I just get I'll roll this 25 times and come back to generate a password okay so these are the five uh, five different numbers I came up with rolling the dice 25 times right so now let's go and find what are these words mean okay so now these are the words we uh, found for these respective numbers and when we put together, so this is my password, right? So this is scientific, this is mathematical because it's completely based on random numbers, right? And these words doesn't make any sense to each other and these words doesn't have any meaning uh, for my life, right? So therefore, it's very, very, very unlikely someone would guess this password. Now I understand this is very, this is like a sentence, it's a very lengthy and it's really hard to type and so and so forth. Yeah, there's a problem, but you need to sacrifice that difficulty if you want to put more secure into your thing. And you can just uh, practice to uh, type this very fast and you can use probably uh, some numbers or in between, but do not remove this space, right? And do not put underscore, right? And don't use this password, but you generate your own one. Now you know how to do that. I'll put all the links in description below. And so now the problem is this doesn't protect you if someone use a keylogger, right? So keylogger is something whatever you type here is locked into a physical file, right? So now let's say for example, they search for facebook.com in their file and obviously the next two things is your username and the password, right? So then this doesn't protect, no matter how strong your password is, you gave, the, you gave them the password, right? So this doesn't protect you. So that's why you need to use something called two-factor authentication with OOTP, right? So it's a one-time password or one-time pad is a two different uh, terminology depend on where you use it and you need to add something like this. This is not a topic for this video. So anyway, now I hope you have enough information and you know how to generate your password and now it's time to go and change your password and you will remember this if you happen to decide the password something something has a more something deserved more security okay 
if you need anything as to know about this or some related topic to this please comment below or you can send those to me through my facebook and you can send this to me through twitter whatever that you prefer to do right so then see you in the next video stay safe take care